Hi folks, welcome to the Prepared Homestead. What the heck is going on with Australia? I mean, I think it was maybe just a generational thing, but I grew up in a time that my generation looked at Australians as being these tough, rough people that they were, you know, still a little bit wild down there. And I'm sure it had a lot to do with movies like Crocodile Dundee. And here we see Australia being quite possibly the biggest sheep on the planet. No offense to any Australians that are watching. And I know that there are because I'm getting emails from you. Uh, I'm getting emails from Australians that still live in Australia. And they're telling me what's going on. And, and they're telling me it's horrific. That it's it's even worse than what we're seeing on the news. Um, they're, they're sending warnings. I've, I've gotten a few in the last uh, few days uh, from Australians saying, please, you know, let your listeners know how bad it is because if if America doesn't wake up America seems to be going down the path in a lot of ways as to where Australia is now and so I don't know how else to do it but folks America needs to wake up um it, it does seem that uh, Australia is a little bit more advanced than we are and then when I say advanced I mean further down that path of you know, complete control and no freedoms, no, no, you know, actual real rights. Uh, they are in absolute panic mode when it comes to this health crisis. I mean, it, it's ridiculous. It's sad, again, and I'm not really picking on people other than Americans, but it's sad when you're looking at European countries, you know, French and the Germans and the, and the Brits, and they are protesting in mass. In fact, uh, just a couple of days ago, the uh, British prime minister uh, said that <clears throat> vaccine passports were going to be happening soon, that, that they were going to be implemented. And, and this, the people in, in, in the UK, they just, they went nuts. And there's videos of them trying to, you know, go into government buildings and in what appears to be quite violent protests um, that they are, that they're just, they're, they're fed up. And we're seeing this in, in Paris. We're seeing it, you know, all over Europe. And yet in Australia, um, while there has been some footage of resistance, of protest, uh, all in all, it seems to be that, you know, they're just taking it for the most part. And I, I really, you know, before I get into the details of this, I've, I've thought quite a bit recently. What, what was that tipping point for Australians? It, it, at what point in their history where they, they just kind of gave up and, uh, and, and put all their faith and trust in government and, and allowed government to kind of steamroll over their liberties and it's something that we need to be aware of here because um <clears throat> it does appear that in some ways the tide is is, is kind of shifting in that direction with you know a decent uh, amount of the american population the stuff that's happening though right now due to their lockdown uh due to their quarantine is <laughs> it's insane. Um, I'm going to play some various different video clips, and some of you probably already seen all these, but I suspect there's going to be some that haven't. They're, they're not only doing this, but they're, it, this has got to be the most 1984 George Orwell uh, that I have personally ever witnessed by any, uh, any government. And listen to these, there's, there's two little, they're like little PSA commercials, things that they have produced, uh, promoting, um, these, these, uh, you know, lockdown quarantine facilities that they've built. And apparently from the best I can tell, they've built one and another one is being constructed. I don't know if it's open yet. Um, but they're talking about it like it's just the most wonderful thing and that that the Australian people are begging for this and and that they're doing such a good job of taking care uh, of these uh, uh, of the Australians. And just just watch. I, I think I'll just play them back to back because there's two separate ones. Our people safe and we desperately need to find an alternative to hotel quarantine. We model this on Howard Springs. Everyone's got a balcony, everyone's got fresh air. We think that it's an ideal location. You know, we would like to see international aircraft coming into Welcamp and we would welcome those arrivals and three minutes later they're in their beds. When you look at the flow and effect to the local producers for food, 3,000 meals a day, when you look at the flow and effect 
for the 400 plus jobs um, through construction. It'll be a great thing for Toowoomba, it'll be a great thing for our region, it'll be a great thing for the Queensland and Australian economy. By the Wagner family working with the Queensland Government to say to the people of Queensland, we want to keep you safe. And the best way to keep you safe and to keep Delta out of Queensland is to build as quickly as possible a regional quarantine facility. I have listened to Queenslanders. I know how much they support a regional quarantine facility to be in Queensland. They want their community kept safe. That's what they're saying to me and we are delivering it. This is a race. We are up against a highly infectious Delta variant that's sweeping the world. We don't know what's next. We need to get these facilities up and running. And everybody has seen how successful Howard Springs is. Can you believe it? I mean, watching this from the outside, I, I, I want to talk to, you know, of course, like I said, I'm getting emails from Australians and that watch the channel. But I would love to talk to just the average Australian on the street. And, and do, do you watch this and you think, oh, this is a good thing? Or do you see through the, the ridiculousness uh, of the words that they're speaking, that, they're, that the government is, has the pure intention of keeping everyone safe. So we're going to throw you all into confinement, into basically a big fancy prison camp. Um, and, it, and you notice how they said that there's been, uh, you know, full containment. You know, no, nothing's gotten out. No one's gotten out. Uh, they, they have everything locked down and they have it locked down secure. Even the news media there, uh, the, the, they're reporting on it in, in a fairly positive way. Here's a, here's a clip from uh, one of the local news stations down Springs near Darwin is held up as the gold standard of quarantine. Separate cabins, on-site testing, catering, and so far, no known breaches. But the Queensland government reckons it can do better. This is going to be a great boost for our defence against the Delta virus. State Cabinet has signed off on the Wellcamp facility first proposed seven months ago. Businessman John Wagner will build it next door to his airport. We will have the first 500 beds operational before Christmas. The state government will lease it and run it. The cost to taxpayers is being kept under wraps. What fantastic value it will be if we can avoid just one lockdown. The federal government's previously rejected the plan on grounds it's too far from a tertiary hospital. But the deputy premier's declared it... The perfect location. Still, some old sticking points remain. Like, will international flights to Wellcamp be approved? Well, we hope so. So uh, we'll be continuing those discussions uh, with, with the federal government. But we can bus people from uh, Brisbane up here if we have to. They, they could have done that months ago if, that, that, if that's what they wished to do, but good for them and uh, I wish them every success. The Prime Minister was given no notice of today's announcement, nor Toowoomba's Mayor. It may be a good thing for the economy in Toowoomba, but let's hope that there's no outbreaks, that there's no problems with it. If they get on top of it early and if they plan it well, it could be a good thing. I think it's absolutely ridiculous. We do not have the medical facilities here in Toowoomba. The Premier says any COVID patients will be transported to Brisbane. And so Queensland will have two purpose-built quarantine facilities. The Commonwealth is backing one here on defence land at Pinkenbar near Brisbane Airport. There'll be rooms for 1,500 people by the middle of next... Now, I know that you'd probably say, just like I would, that, oh, this is their little fake news, this is their way of manipulating people, they're only, they're only portraying what's going on... Um, and, and they're, you know, from, from their point of view that it's all great. But there are uh, videos that are being uh, released from individuals that are in the lockdown. Now, of course, I know we could, you know, potentially say that some of these videos being released are, are, are staged. Uh, they're, they're, you know, maybe they're paid actors or something like that. We don't know. Um, but there's, I've, I've not come across any videos uh, contrary to these. All just waiting patiently to be fed. It's like when you shake the, uh, the bag of dog, the dog treats, and the dogs come running. <laughs> We're all just outside waiting. Just had the cops come around and tell this woman off staying over here as well. Because there was about five seconds in between her taking a, cup of, a sip of her cup of tea 
and she took her face mask down. Cops came around literally on the dot and just pulled her up for it and she said, well, I'm drinking my tea and they said, well, not right now, you know, put your face mask on. So, um, it's a bit intense. When you hear that noise, you know it's coming. I'm so ready. No, please come back. See what's on the menu today. Oh yeah, what we got. Oh, that's a cheesecake. This is what we got on today's menu. Why they uh, continue to give us a bowl of fruit salad and then another bit of fruit to go with it, I still don't. So I think at this point you can kind of see my point that. Um, it's like Australia has fallen. Um, they, they have, and it's not just recent. Uh, this, this, the lockdowns that they had back in the beginning were, were definitely the most stringent, um, unless you include China. And honestly, we, you know, I have my doubts on, on exactly what went on there. I think a lot of what we saw out of China in the beginning was staged, but you know, I have no proof of that. Um, oh, Australia has basically, uh, they've thrown out the rule book when it comes to, you know, the, the, the citizen has certain rights. They don't care. Um, they have implemented horrific uh, lockdowns. I've seen uh, videos where they are just, you know, randomly attacking people on the streets because they're not wearing a proper face covering or... Um, there's been reports of people that's actually died. There's even been reports of, of infants dying uh, because they were refused medical service because they didn't have the thing. This is serious. And I think the question is, is are we going to see that here? And that's what a lot of people are saying. They're like, hey, you know, we, th this is heading to America. While I'll admit there's not any strong... Um, evidence that I'm seeing things kick up here in, in the United States like what's going on in Australia. There is little whispers and there is little bits here and there. You know, we're seeing states like New York and California and uh, a few others uh, throughout all this have implemented very strict uh, restrictions. New York has their <clears throat> their little passporty thing that um, there's a lot of businesses you can't go to if you don't have one, if you don't prove that you have this. Um, we're seeing that in other areas. We're seeing a lot of uh, companies uh, require it to do business, to work there. So we are seeing a shift in that direction. Uh, even even people like the, the all-knowing, all-powerful Dr. Fakey um, has made statements that, you know, complimenting Australia on what they're doing. And, and even that to the point that eh, maybe we should do that here. So I believe that there is something to be concerned with. I, I think I've said all along that I think Australia has been a beta test. I think they have, for whatever reason, whoever it was that decided that, you know, whatever elite, you know, when they're sitting around in their smoky little dark rooms <laughs> and they're, you know, hmm, okay, we've got to do this big lockdown and we need someone to test it out first. And did Australia raise its hand and say, oh, yeah, yeah let, it, let it be us. I don't know. But it does, I, I feel, I feel that this, we're seeing a beta test uh, in Australia that could be implemented everywhere else. And, you know, my, some people would say, well, will this, will this health crisis even be around when other countries, yeah, it'll be around. It'll be around. They're already talking about uh, all these other different variants. Uh, there, there's even been, um, you know, CV, you know, the name 22 in the news uh, talking about new variants that are that are much worse, that are much more deadly. You know, even the head of Pfizer has talked about that they believe eventually we'll get one that, that will be, you know, this resistant. I'm trying to watch my words. Um, so, so, yeah, it's going to last long enough. They're going to make sure that it lasts long enough. And, you know, in a year, two years, three years, could we get to the point uh, here in the United States where we're like Australia, where we're, where we're implementing things like Australia? Most certainly it's possible. Uh, it could happen much sooner than that. 
Um, and I think that the, 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 the motivation is there from the, the, the elites and the leadership here in the United States. Um, I think it's just waiting for the, the American population to get to that tipping point to where uh, they would accept it, or at least a, a good amount would accept it. In fact, the, the article that I reported on multiple times uh, out of Newsweek uh, was quoting uh, White House staff saying that that's in fact what, uh, you know, the president was was wanting to do was wanting to kind of slow it down a little bit and wait for the American uh, population that the the their opinions to finally accept all this. Um, so we're we're seeing uh, bad stuff happen in Australia, and we're also seeing that the, the the mood change here in the United States, where more and more people are accepting it. I mean, the news is all over about how horrific it is in Florida, and I really don't know because I don't know anyone in Florida. Um, I do know that for a while and still a little bit, uh, the news was talking about my state here in Missouri of how horrific it was and how everything was just overflowing in the hospitals and stuff. And, and I can tell you for a fact, uh, at least from the people that I have spoken with, uh, the people that I have known and what I've seen with my own eyes, that that's just not true, that that's just not true. Uh, the closest hospital to us. Uh, we have driven by it numerous times throughout all this. And um, it's actually been in the news. It's a smaller hospital, but it's been in the news about how many they've been, you know, they're just overwhelmed and overburdened with all these cases. And you drive by there and the hospital looks like, a, you know, like it's abandoned. There's, there's hardly anyone there. Um, I've actually pulled up in the hospital parking lot and just sat there for a while. And, you know, there's employees coming out, talking, chit-chat, and everything just seems as normal as can be. Very slow day. Um, so I'm not buying the news uh, reports that everything is just overwhelmed in these states. Uh, so if Florida is anything like Missouri, uh, I suspect it's not nearly as bad as what the news media is portraying it. But there's certainly this buildup, this hype. And... As that happens, um, we could certainly see uh, more and more pressure for something like in Australia to happen here. This is, is dangerous. And I understand that there's, there's, there's one, one factor that makes us different from Australia. And that's uh, we still have the Second Amendment. We still own guns. And they gave those up a few years back. Um, and don't think for a minute that, um, that the, the leadership here in the United States has forgotten that. They, they still want to take that. And if you remember, that was one of uh, Joe Biden's first and uh, things was talking about how we got to get rid of them. We got to get rid of these guns. And, uh, you know, I don't know that, that we'll ever get to that point where they're really actively, truly trying to confiscate and change laws, but they certainly want to. Um, I think that we need to be concerned with what's going on in Australia, not just sit back and like roll our eyes and shake our heads and like, oh my goodness, what's going on down there? Why are those people doing that? Why aren't they resisting? Uh, we need to use this as a learning experience uh, and, and, and unfortunate for the Australian people, uh, but you and I need to be watching what's going on there and, and paying close attention close attention to, to the, the words that they use, how they portray it, uh, and, and how uh, people react to it because um, I think it is within the realm of possibility of someday seeing what's going on in Australia happen right here in the United States. Um, maybe not everywhere, but certainly in some places. And for those of you folks that live in these uh, much more left slanted states, uh, beware because you could see this kind of stuff happen in your state. Um, it's it's a very sad thing. It really is. Um, I've actually known some Australian people. They're good people, and it's it's sad that um, that the people of Australia has has set by and allowed this to happen. I'm sure there are many many of them down there that feel like you and I and that want to resist and that absolutely hate this kind of uh, takeover. But unfortunately, there just doesn't seem to be enough of them uh, because it's happening and no one is really resisting that much. Uh, folks, don't let this happen here. Um, you know, I, I still say that we need to be the gray man and kind of lay low. But um, if this kind of stuff starts happening, we start seeing people being carried off. Um, I, I'm going to probably say at that point, maybe uh, lying low and being incognito is 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 no longer the thing to do, because 
when we allow this type of evil to take hold, uh, it will spread like a cancer. Uh, we, we must stand up at some point and resist it if this is what's coming to America. And uh, there is a lot of, I think, indication that, that this is where we're heading. Uh, all right, folks. Stay on your toes. Stay alert. Keep your powder dry. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next video.